Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be working on the Civic a little bit. Uh, last couple weeks, I've been working on some of the dash harness over here, trying to get it to plug into the manual ECU. Speaking of dash, we did get the Civic dash out. Um, so yeah, that pretty much leaves us with a blank slate. Um, I guess you could say today the build is officially starting. A couple people have asked me how long it's going to take. Um, we're going to try to get the rest of, I'd say, a half a day in today. Me and Michael are going to try to get the subframe swapped out so we can start getting the engine to mock up. Um, there's one small issue with the transmission mount, which I'll show you guys. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so real quick, I just want to show everybody what I did to the harness. So basically, this whole dash harness is from the automatic motor, or the automatic harness, basically. Um, so I had to make it compatible to plug into the manual ECU. So right there, we did that. Um, one other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut right here. This is the hazard light switch, and we're going to have to wire in the Civic dash switch for the hazards um one other thing we had to do the whole rear harness i kind of chopped up and just made it all we're running is the rear tail light harness right there's the plug and then the fuel pump also i had to convert the tail light harness from the civic to the cl plug so, which we did that already, I did that another time. But now, the Civic tail light harness is gonna plug into the CL main rear harness here that goes into the, to the main dash harness. Uh, another thing we're gonna have to do over here is just run the power for the starter and the battery, cause that, the battery's gonna be in a different location. Um, also, the tail light or the headlight plugs. See the headlights on the the headlight plugs for the CL harness obviously aren't gonna plug into the Civic headlights. So we're gonna have to cut the plugs from the Civic headlight harness and wire them up to the plugs on the CL harness. That's another little thing how, that I'm, issue I'm having to deal with. Other than that, everything's going to plug in. Um, the engine harness is going to plug right into the manual ECU. Right, because we're using the main manual engine harness. The only other issue with the wiring is there's two, two sensors right here on the cam. Bank one. Right, this is the automatic, well this is the knock sensor back here which I broke. Um, so there's these two plugs on the automatic. On the manual, if you look over here, there's just the one hiding back here. So, I'm going to make a video about how to convert the actual motor from automatic to manual. So obviously this one's the manual set up right now. And we're going to have to convert all that stuff over to this motor to, to make it compatible with the manual harness. Um, which... I have not seen a, a, a very good video on that done like to explain the whole process of a manual swap is is a lot more than these people are talking about believe me um, little example here this water pump housing this is the one off of the automatic it has look if you could see back here on this little piece it has this extra coolant line that goes down and it goes to the transmission well on the on the manual water pump or the sorry the thermostat housing see there's it's not there well see there's only one 
on this one there's two see and, and you could plug this line you could plug it right here or you could just plug it somewhere right here but I mean just to run everything cleaner and less plugs and everything we're gonna run the whole but like I said I'm gonna make a video describing more in depth of the actual manual swap process because it's not just the transmission and clutch and, and an ECU like people kind of make it out to be I still haven't even figured out how I'm gonna use these plugs to make the heater controls work you know to make the hazard control work is, is the easy part the hard part is how am I gonna get the heater control to work other than that everything else just needs to be cleaned up I'm gonna wait until the car is running obviously I'm no wiring expert so once the car is swapped and running I'm gonna start deleting this whole harness and simplifying it down to basically like I got the rear harness so far you know just reloomed and basic just the wires I need just the shit that I need not all this extra crap that who knows who knows what all this goes to right well I mean I need this bundle but like all these plugs are not even used anymore there's no power seats there's none of that garbage right so but yeah this little wiring harness has been a little process it's a bit too tedious for me to film and explain as you know I'm learning about this harness as I go so I'm not gonna try to explain to someone else that I, I don't even understand fully yet right so right now we got this thing up we're about to just drop this uh, subframe which I'm guessing is gonna take us like five minutes we'll get the subframe out of here and then I mean obviously I just noticed a little bit earlier but listen that ain't good at all damn that is way worse when it's in the air but clearly need some wheel bearings too so we're gonna have to do wheel bearings while I got the brakes off I'm gonna do new rotors and pads probably paint the calipers while I got everything off but yeah shit I mean really realistically this is the start of the bill for me I don't really consider stripping the car part of the bill because to me this is this is my foundation right here. This is the blank canvas that I've been waiting for. So we got almost 99% of everything. I don't know if I mentioned the clutch pedal obviously isn't going to bolt up from the CL, which I don't know why that never crossed my mind. So I'm going to have to go back to the part yard, find a clutch pedal that's going to bolt in. We have a master cylinder, but just got to get the correct clutch pedal. I just want to share with you guys another issue we're having with the subframe so the back of the lower control arm well this is the back side uh, has these bushings kind of slips through this bushing here and it has this plate right and that's what holds on the back of the this is on the EK subframe on the EG it's the same distance but you could see there's like this weird and the bushing itself actually holding this up here the bushing might be the same but the bracket is gonna be different on the EG and when I got this in the in the junkyard these bolts were already removed which is telling me somebody already went and took the EG rear control arm brackets and, and probably the bushing so we're gonna have to go back when we get the clutch pedal and get at least these brackets I'll probably get new bushings if I can but we're gonna have to find these lower brackets where this gap isn't on this side one little small issue okay but also I don't think see the so um, the sway bar 
bolts right here on this one that isn't there so either the EG's evidently didn't have a sway bar or I don't know like I said this one was already like halfway out of the car when we did get it so we're gonna get it in there at least in the meantime while it's out we got to get out this like evap line and this is what the canister sat on so we're gonna have to like get this cut out I want to get it cut out and so it looks a little bit cleaner all, all the little spots with green are gonna be cut out like this little brackets deleted and uh, these two right here got to get cut out but so before the subframe goes in, we gotta get these two out of here and get this, which, let's get this out right now. And ah, good. Okay, now we just need to, yeah, delete it. Now I just need to cut this right here and then we'll um, mock up the subframe. Okay, so we got that out. I got that little charcoal canister bracket cut out and I kind of got carried away with the grinder. I started cleaning up some of the seam sealer and getting some of the spots ready for, I'm gonna have to weld a little spot right here. Uh, anyway, so I, I hit it with some primer and then I really wasn't happy with it so just to get everything looking uniform before I start mocking stuff up, I had a can of satin red and we just um, did a little quick coat on it. That way it doesn't look like stupid. It's going to be a few months before we get it back out to do a real bay paint. But for now, you know, it doesn't look like complete shit, basically. Um, so right now we're just going to try to get the subframe bolted in and we may try to hang put the control arm so we can see what the front coilovers are going to look like we'll, we'll see how far we get in it okay so we got this thing in need to get the other brackets for the control arm we can get the control arms in uh, we could test fit the steering rack but we need this bracket right here that someone forgot and what else we're gonna need the little fuel line fitting because I'm not trying to make custom fuel lines yet We got the old one out. Got the new one in. Well, actually, that's an older subframe than that one, technically. But it's new to this car. The engine bay is somewhat prepped and ready for all the first install. But I think that is going to do it for this video. I don't have much else to put together on this one. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys thought. And then see you on the next one.